Hey everybody, Shell here. Okay, so I wanted to try making uh, bird seed feeder logs. Um, we go through a lot of bird seed. We have a lot of wild birds here, and I thought this would be a neat um, thing to try. There's a lot of different ways to do it, a lot of different opinions on how to do it, so I went with a simple route. So basically, with this recipe, you need um, some PVC pipes um, or anything round or whatever shape you want to make it. I also plan to do some bars, um, some balls. I'm going to use cookie cutters to do some eventually, but for today, we're going to do the logs. Um, so we've got our PVC pipes. You're going to need two cups of boiled water, which I have here in my kettle. And then you're going to need two tablespoons of gelatin, which I have here. You can use really any kind of gelatin. I'm using Knox. Um, you're going to need 10 cups of bird seed. Now, I have not ever done this before. I decided that for the very first time I would do it on video. So let's see how bad I can mess this up or if I'm successful at it, we'll find out. All right, there's our gelatin. And we'll pour our two cups of water in there. Now they say you wanna make sure that your water is boiled at at least 190 degrees. So if you don't have a kettle like this to do it, um, they recommend using like a candy thermometer um, and being able to test the temperature. And then you want to use a whisk. You want to make sure all of it's dissolved. You don't have to worry about this kind of gelatin like getting syrupy thick on you. So take your time doing it. Make sure it's dissolved. And then we're going to pour our 10 cups of seed into one big bowl. Hopefully my bowl's big enough. I have two bowls just in case. Now the bird seed that we have is a mixture of all the good stuff. We've got um, sunflower seeds, you've got millet, you've got, now with the sunflower seeds, you've got shelled and unshelled. This has both. Some people prefer to go unshelled so that there's no waste. We have got enough animals here that I'm not really worried about the waste. Um, we've got corn, we've got shelled peanuts, everything that you could possibly want for birds is in here, even some dried fruit. So that's always fun for them. So then it says it can be a little easier if you make like a hole in the center, kind of like you would with flour. Um, so we're going to make a little hole in the center. And then we're going to pour it in. And then we're going to spend our time mixing it. You know what? I forgot my spoon. Let me grab my spoon. All right, so this spoon that I chose to use, it's just a plastic version of the wooden spoon. I chose this one because of the round end. That way when I put it in there, I can Put a hole through my center because you want to put a hole through the center of your log so that you can run a string through it and most people use a stick and run a string and then your log will be hanging like that so that's why i chose this particular spoon so let's see if our gelatin is mixed and it seems to be so we're gonna just pour it in And again, it doesn't set super fast, so I'm not too worried about it setting quicker than I can use it. And then we want to mix it all up till everything is wet. You know, and this doesn't seem to take very long to make at all. Um, a couple minutes, if that. Um, now, as you see, I'm making a mess, but I have some of my plastic... I say my, I don't cook in this house. So I have some of my husband's plastic cutting um, sheets to help me eliminate mess. But 
You just want to make sure everything is coated. And I have a little spatula to help get the stickies off. And this kind of will help you make sure you've got everything coated very well. I really do think that um, this will make quite quite a bit of logs depending on the size of PVC you use. Most of the videos that I watched, people were using like four inch PVC. This is three inch PVC. I think it's more than big enough for us. Um, and I cut, had it cut down to different sizes. Um, we've got, you know, this smaller one that I'm gonna try. Um, we've got the big one. I see, I think that's 12, I think that's eight, six and four, something like that. Um, so we can try different things. Soon I'm gonna also make some, they call them fat balls. So look forward to that. I'm gonna do some um, fat balls um, so that we can start feeding those instead of suet. Make sure everybody gets some of their seed here. All right, so we've got it all mixed. Now you're gonna want a wide mouthed funnel if you have one, if not, then um, I guess you could just carefully use um, a spoon. Me, I'm very messy, believe it or not. I know that's shocking, um, but I am a very messy person, so I definitely need the white mouth funnel. So, and then I also, I'm gonna keep it on this plastic. Now, if I lift this up afterwards, it will fall out. So when I say keep it, I'm gonna keep it. So if you wanna put it on something else, a lid, a bowl, something that you can use for transfer, then I would recommend doing that. Me, I'm gonna go ahead and keep it here for a while um, and then I'm gonna move it so that it can set. The wide mouth funnel help keeps it from kind of spilling everywhere. Also, if you're using um, sunflower seeds that are not shelled, you're going to start to notice that sometimes they will um, start to, the color will start to run. I know that's very weird, but like on the spoon, you can see there's like a, a liquid that's like a dark brown. That's something that I learned growing sunflowers. Um, they do kind of leak. So don't be alarmed at that. You're not doing anything wrong. Now, next, you're gonna want something to compact, to press it down. This peanut butter jar happens to fit perfectly, so that's what I'm gonna use. And you just gently press it down, just like that. Now, I am preferring wax paper over parchment over just sheer control. I tried to unroll the parchment paper to put in here and it was a mess, but the wax paper seems to be easily manageable. Some people prefer wax, some people prefer parchment. Try both if you want or whatever you have on hand neither one is wrong and each will be a lifesaver when it comes to excuse the chihuahua in the background but both will be very useful in keeping your log from sticking to the inside so now we want to put our hole all the way through and then we take it out and it's there done and so now what we want to do is we want to repeat this in the other logs. So we'll go ahead and we'll do that real quick. The cool thing about this is that I don't know how many of you buy these logs at the store, but 
they're quite expensive um, for a nice good sized one. You're probably looking at at least, um, depending on where you live here, on the Pacific Northwest where I'm at, you're looking at probably um, anywhere from 15 to $20 for one. Um, for ones for my chickens, those ones are a little cheaper and we only buy them when they're on sale. So normally what I end up doing is I get two, I, I get them when they're two, you know, buy one, get one. So normally I end up getting one for like $24 or two for $24 instead of um, an insane amount for each. We've got that one filled. We want to put our hole through it. There we go. So now I'm going to show you how to put the parchment in. So we'll use, this one will be about to there. So we'll roll a new one out to make sure we can fit it. Again, I prefer the wax over the parchment. And as anybody who watches my videos knows, I do not, <laughs> um, I do not do editing. So I apologize for any mistakes that you have to watch me do. Um, but sometimes I guess that makes videos better, but no, I don't do any editing. I just kind of do it raw as we go. And as you can see with this, it makes a good amount. Um, I mean, I've got quite a bit left here. And it's great because now I'll have a few to go in both the front and the backyard. And I'm thinking I'm going to make some for the chickens as well which um, they will eat anything, so I'm not concerned on whether or not they'll eat the, uh, <laughs> the mix. Um, what I'll probably do with, with theirs is I'll probably make theirs with a bunch of scratch grains. So they're, they're little piggies anyway, so I'm sure they'll like that. Another way that some people make these is um, they often will put um, corn syrup in. Um, I think that that's a good idea for making the uh, like the fat the fat rolls that we'll be making them next. Um, but I don't know that I think that's a healthy idea for like an everyday sort of seed block like this. So I think I'll save that for when we do the suet replacement. That is the cockatoo, and I apologize. Sometimes he feels um, uninvolved <laughs> and make sure that the attention gets put on him. All right, so there's the third one filled. And then we have to make sure we put our hole through it. Just like that. Could you get paper towels for me, Jeremy? Some of our gelatin is leaking. I am incredibly messy, so again, that's why I need the the uh, sheets. My husband's standing right there with the cockatoo so that maybe he'll not think that there's something nefarious going on in here. I've considered making him one as well. I don't think that, um, I don't think that it will be, he doesn't like new things, so most of the time when I make stuff for him, he won't try it because it's scary to him, but I think that as far as this goes, I think he would be 
he gets lots of treat stuff that hangs. I think that if I make it small enough, he'll be okay with it. I do, uh, I do a lot of dehydrating for him. I dehydrate corn on the cob and and then I, we put a hole through it and hang it in his cage and he loves it. So stuff like that they really like. So if you have inside birds, that's something to keep in mind as well. And then this little bit that's left, and it's mostly just smaller stuff. We'll mix that in and then we'll put it in a smaller one. Or I could also go and put it and make like a cake, you know, and just put it in a like a pie pan dish. Actually, I think we'll try that. Hold on one second, Bob, you take over. There's a cat on the other side. Let's see. We can use this little pie pan here, and what we can do is we can line it. Like this, with our extra, and we'll make we can make a little a little cake with it. I've got some smaller birds that get pushed out of the trees. These are some of the trees out back, but then I've got some smaller ones that what they do is I put extra little feeder stations on the ground for them, and they're like for the chickadees and stuff. They usually get kicked out of the trees by the larger birds. We've got a lot of crows, we've got a lot of jays, um, I've got doves, um, and then of course some predator birds out there as well. They don't eat from the feeders, they eat what goes to the feeders. But I like to put little feeder stations on the ground for those birds. So if we make them a little cake like this, I think they will like that very much. One thing that I've learned is that if you take care of your birds, your wildlife birds, they take care of you. And what I mean by that is whenever I have a predator bird show up out there and they're stalking my chickens or my smaller dogs or something like that, I know about it pretty immediately they will alert and then i have got a murder of crows for those who don't know what that is that's a family of crows so a, a, a family of crows they call it a murder so i've got this murder of crows that lives here that there goes the chihuahua again that what they do is they run off any and all predator animals at our property um i have watched them run off um, falcons i've watched them run off um, eagles um, I've watched them run off owls, um, and I appreciate that. And that's something that they're pretty well known for, is taking care of um, predators in places that they consider home. So I'm privileged, I think, my opinion anyway. I feel privileged that they feel that this is their home enough to protect it. So I don't have to worry about not knowing if there's a hawk in my yard. Now, I do keep my chickens under pretty tight wraps, but we have had some predator birds stalk our dogs before, and we have had owls try to take out some of our dogs before. Um, I have a Shih Tzu that they really seem to want to go after, but I don't have to worry about that now because I've got these um, crows that they will, I've got some pretty impressive crows that will battle to the death. Um, to keep them out of here. So I'm very grateful for that. So in return, this is kind of my way of thanking them. So I'm excited that this seems to have worked out quite well. We've got our cake or patty or whatever you want to call it. You could also make them into balls if you wanted. You could roll them up um, in some wax or parchment paper. Um, now what we want to do is we want to let them set. So what I'm going to do, since our temperatures are still cooler here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take them out and I'm going to set them in our garage. Um, we have a fridge out there that I could put them in um, as well if I wanted to, but it's cool enough out there to where I probably shouldn't have to. So what you can do is you can put them in your, your 
fridge or your garage, um, wherever you have space to. You can let them sit for about 24 hours. And then after that, you can um, slide them out, put your, um, whatever you're using. Um, I'm gonna use some um, brown, uh, just twine and a stick to hang them, but whatever you wanna use to hang them, and then you can hang them. It usually takes about 24 hours, they say, so we'll see. I'll be sure to make an update um, on that in addition to this video. So I hope this helps. I encourage you to try it if you've got birds. Um, I'm glad that I tried it with everybody. And if you have any questions, let me know. Um, I like to answer questions on if it worked or not, or if you can think of any uh, ideas that could make it easier or better, or if you saw something that I did wrong, let me know. Um, but as always, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe, and I'll win.